Hey everybody, welcome back to the Kit Caves. Uh, back again with a um, a little vid with regards to the uh, the build series for the AMT Irritol uh, 11400 scale Enterprise D. Um, as ever, thank you to everybody for the um, the likes and the comments on the last video that was posted a couple of days ago. Also for the uh, uh, for any new subscribers to the channel, always very very much appreciated, and I hope everybody's doing absolutely uh, fantastically. So, a little bit of a video I'd like to share um, with regards as to what's coming up, future build on on, on this particular project. Um, obviously, on the on the last video, it was more so I was installing the lighting system into the top saucer half section of the. Uh, uh, of the kit itself um, and I've kind of stopped there I, something I mentioned was I need to start working on the bottom section as well getting that ready for the lighting to be installed and then going from that point um, I haven't had a couple of little bits of, of lighting to go into the top saucer section the arboretum blue windows and some little strips of white LEDs into the top section um, to go in um, I've got as far as installing these strips here they're not connected or wired up yet to the mains power supply because I've stopped there. These are purely in place just to light up the, the windows on the bottom half uh, of the saucer for the, for the middle part. And I've kind of stopped there. I've still got all wires to, to, uh, to sort that up here. Now, part of the reason for, for stopping at this point, aside from having to work on the, uh, the bottom section, um, Something that I demonstrated on, on the video, so I'll just bring this back into back into view here on the last video, was that uh, with the LEDs, the SMDs inserted here for what I call the, the navigation or strobe lighting, other people refer to them as the, the, the running lights, I had the, the green, the red and the white flashing. You know, I was taking a bit of artistic license with it, you know, they look pretty, pretty good flashing. Is it entirely screen accurate? Not really, but kind of yes, it is. And this is where I just like to uh, to share people what my thoughts and process is going forward with this build. Now, um, another YouTuber, um, and again, thank you for the comment. Um, YouTuber goes by the name of James uh, RN Seven DX left a comment. You know, thank you for that comment. It was a, it was a very positive comment. Uh, don't get me wrong. Um, but James mentioned something, and he is absolutely correct in what he said. Um, is that the, the the running lights, as he calls them, the running lights or the strobe lights, as I call them, whatever, whichever way you want to refer to them. Basically, on the saucer section, when you watch it on screen, they don't flash. He is absolutely correct. However, I did mention in the comments, well, there is a scene in Picard where they do flash. This is what I'd just like to go through and, and, uh, and clarify. Now, of course, I'm trying to go for accuracy with this kit. Um, and again, having them set up as it currently is with them flashing is not technically screen accurate. And that's kind of because I've let my imagination run away with me, you know, run away with me. And I'm kind of having to rein myself back in and go, look, come on in, Steve, just do it properly. Um, but to clarify, and it kind of got me thinking. Because I have been watching, um, watching videos, I've been watching, you know, TV episodes, reruns on Sky, I've watched them every single night. Why not? When you're cooking and eating dinner, put, put old Star Trek The Next Generation on, fantastic stuff. And there are certain scenes where I see the ship flying on the screen, you know, um, I kind of pause, rewind, pause, rewind several times because I'm watching now, I'm watching the, the, the light patterns, I'm watching what's flashing, what's not flashing to go for accuracy. And what I kind of picked up, and this is by watching the, the Next Generation TV series, screen grabs of from what you can see in generations plus also um, the final episodes of series three of picard there's three different configurations of these running and navigation lights that we see um, to go through them and explain briefly in the next generation um, and in generations the movie yep uh, james as he pointed out quite correctly the source of lights here the green the red and the white one at 10 4 top and bottom they don't flash they're just illuminated static illumination as i as i call it um where you've got what I, the lights that are up here at the back the four white lights they don't flash the lights at the back of the the, the tail the tail fin here again apologies for this very poor low-tech demonstration with the image here 
the red and green on the back here, they don't flash either. The only ones that seem to flash, the lights top and bottom at the ends of the wart nacelles, you've got the, the flashing light above the, the back of the bridge, and then there's one on the, the underside on the belly, as I call it, they, they flash, they're the only ones that flash. And that's a configuration, as I mentioned, you see in the next generation and in generations, and even a scene in Picard where, again, it shows that configuration. But then I picked up, there's two, two more configurations that it shows. And again, that's more so in the, uh, the final scenes um, or the final episode of Picard. When the Enterprise is flying through the Borg ship, you know, all the weapons are firing, the phasers are firing, the torpedoes are going, all of these running lights, navigation, strobe lights, none of them flash. They're all static illuminated. Um, it almost seems as though because the Enterprise has now got into battle mode, the lights just are on and are permanently on as, it, as it's you know, fighting and doing whatever. But then it shows a scene right towards the very end of the final episode whereby the Enterprise, the D, is flying side by side with the Enterprise G, and it's kind of going this way off screen. And this is where I'd noticed that these lights change again, the configuration of them changes. When it's flying side by side by the Enterprise G, what I picked up and noticed, and I've watched this over and over and over again, and I did it the other night, as soon as, you know, when James left, uh, left the comment, and again, James, thank you for your comment. Um, it is really appreciated. I went back and I was watching it and rewinding the scenes, and you know, going over and over and over, and even to the point where the wife said to me, well, why do you keep, you know, why do you keep rewinding and watching the same thing over and over and over again? I said, because I'm researching. Um, I'm watching what's going on. The final configuration that we see with the Enterprise at the end of Picard, flying off screen with the Enterprise G on the right-hand side, the light configuration, the, uh, the running lights, the navigation lights, they, they change again. What I picked up on was, the lights here at 10 forward or above 10 forward, and I'm assuming it's the same on the bottom, why not? With the white light here, sorry, this is low tech, I've got some glare coming. The white light here at the front of 10 forward, the light behind the bridge at the top here, the four white lights that are on the top and bottom of the saucer here. Okay. Um, and again, what I mean by that is, if I just close that up, these, if I can make this out on camera again, apologies for this low-tech demonstration, these four white lights that are here each side, they, they do flash. And they're flashing at, it appears to be an interval of around about a second, one second on, one second off flashing. I also picked up as well, that on that final scene, that the green and red lights, that all the green and red lights, so here on the top of the saucer, on the saucer section, the tail lights at the back here, red and green, and also the red and green lights on the end of the warp nacelles, they flash as well. And they flash at a slower rate. It appears to be roughly somewhere around a 1.5 to 2 second on-off interval. So, <laughs> it kind of got me thinking. I was like, right, okay. There's three configurations of how these lights get set up when you see it in different scenes. You've got what I'm now personally terming, whether it's right or wrong, whatever, but this is just what I'm terming it, turning them. You've got set number one, which is the classic or the cruising configuration, if you like. The cru classic cruising configuration is what we see in the next generation standard. The running lights here, the green and red are all static illuminated the only lights that are flashing are the one is the one behind the bridge on the end of the water nacelles and the one that's on the belly that's what i'm what personally i'm terming the cruising configuration then we see the battle scene with the borg ship where all the lights are just statically illuminated and then we flip again to the um that scene the flyby the side by side with the enterprise g where those all the lights are flashing, but in a different configuration, which I'm terming personally. And again, you don't have to agree with my terminology here. It's just what I'm what I'm using to try and you know, get it all clarified in my own head. I refer to that, or I'm personally calling that the uh, the escort because it's escorting another ship. The escort configuration of lighting flashing. So there's three different configurations. 
Um, now, you know, however anybody would like to incorporate the lighting into their own kits, it's entirely up to them. Um, and technically, you could put in any configuration as, as you would like, and it would be technically screen accurate, what we see. And this is where it kind of got me thinking. Well, which one do I want to go for? Which configuration? Do I want to go for the, the standard TV series next generation, the cruising lighting that we see? Do I want to have it at the end of the card with the escort lighting configuration where they're all flashing? Or do I just want them all statically illuminated, which I don't want because that's boring. And then the gears in my head started to turn and I started to think to myself, well, hang on a minute. Why do I have to be limited to just one set or configuration of lighting for these running lights and navigation lights? I've got an Arduino board. I'm programming an Arduino for lighting and sound effects. I can have the best of all worlds here. So do you know what? I've decided I'm going to bloody do that. In my build, I'm going to have all three configuration of running and navigation lights. What the hell? Why not? This is my build. I'm going for it. What that essentially means then is there's programming to be done with the Arduino. Now I have mentioned before that with my Arduino sketch, the programming into it, there is more program I want to do. And this is where I'm constantly making things even more complicated for myself on this build. Essentially what I'm going to do, I'm going to program into the board that you press one single button and it will change the configuration of this of the um, the running lights and the navigation lights i'm going to have the classic um, the cruising uh, configuration which is what we see in the next generation tv series the standard effect then you press the button again it's probably going to have a sound effect incorporated where it, it, it you know it uh, plays the red alert and it changes to the battle mode lighting lighting where they all come on they're all static because now it's in the battle mode and you can then you know have the phasers firing torpedoes going and then you press the same button again and it cycles to the third set of of, of configuration which is the escort like we see at the end of uh the card where the lights again flash in a different configuration why not why not have it all incorporated you know You've got the options, and that's the, the, the beauty about using Arduino and programmable uh, microcontrollers and builds like this. You can customize it to, to, to your heart's desire, if you like. And I thought to myself, yeah, I'm not going to be, excuse me, I just dropped something. I'm not going to limp myself to just one set when I can incorporate all three. Why the hell not? Let's go for it. Let's go all out. I've, sent, I've said this before on this build. I'm going all out with this one. So, yeah, that's, that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. So what does that mean then? What needs to change? Well, programming, uh, additional programming needs to be changed on the board. But something else needs to change as well. With the lighting side of things, what I've already got installed up here on the kit, it doesn't mean, by doing that configuration, it doesn't mean that I need to strip these lights out. These lights can stay exactly in place where they are, that I've already got installed. All that needs to be changed hardware-wise here are just these resistors they need to come off because these resistors are rated for uh, a 5 volt supply straight from the arduino they need to be changed for a direct 9 volt supply and i'll explain why that is in just a second but that's an easy thing to do to take these off and just swap out those resistors the main thing that really does need to change though is the actual board i'm going to be using to drive all these lights now again I'm currently using an Arduino Uno, just as a, a mock-up, and we've seen it before on the breadboard. Um, if I pan the camera around as best I can, we can see it all there, looking very messy, spaghetti junction, as people refer to it here in the UK. Um, here's my Uno, been fantastic, really impressed with it, um, mocking up all the bits and pieces here. Again, apologies for the, the, the messy workbench. This is all mocked up while I program and experiment and connect things together and you can see here the, the most recent one with the touch capacitive touch switch sensor this is what needs to change now originally i was thinking about using a arduino nano or an arduino pro mini in this build the problem with that now going forwards 
if I'm going to be having these uh, the three different configuration of, of, of lighting for the, the, the running lights and the navigation lights is I, there's not enough pins on those boards. As you can see here, what I've got left, certainly on the, the UNO, I've only got one, two, three, four, five, I've only got six pins left available to me to utilize. Uh, which is fine. I mean, these boards have got plenty of pins for, for, for basic stuff. But because now with the running the running lights, the navigation lights, because they're going to be changing to different effects. I'm going to need more pins to connect them up to on the board here, because each set is essentially going to need. Let me just do a quick calculation. I'm going to need one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to need six pins, six digital pins, solely dedicated just to those navigation and uh, uh, running lights to, so that they can, when you press the button, they activate and they flash it. If they're either on static or some are flashing and then they do the different, you know, different things that I'm going to be programming it to do. So what I've already purchased, what I've already ordered and just waiting for it to arrive, I've decided I'm not going to go with an Arduino Nano in the, in the final build. I'm not going to go with the, uh, <clears throat> But a Pro Mini because there just isn't enough pins because I need to have more buttons, um, which I can you know I've got pins here to add a button to, just not enough you know, input output output pins. This is the problem. So I've decided what's going to be incorporated into the final build is an Arduino Mega, a bigger board, bigger microcontroller. The benefit with that is that there's there's a lot more flash memory on the board itself, so a lot more uh, programming of code can go into it but more crucially whereas whereas the arduino uno i think this has roughly about 20 pins and you know and that's a mixture of digital and analog pins on arduino nano i think it has about 26 uh, total pins to use the arduino mega has 54 a combination of digital and analog pins 54 pins to use so that gives me plenty that gives me plenty of of pins a mixture of digital and analog pins to add more components to it and add more things going into this build it gives me the options yes it's a bigger board um the you know the mega arduino mega is a bigger board than than the the you know that we're seeing here but that's okay because i'm not limited to space with the board a lot of modelers, as I know, they when they have their circuit boards, they like to install their circuit boards into the actual model itself. You know, either they... Apologies there, everybody. The, the camera stopped recording for some, uh, for some reason. As I was saying, so apologies for that. I really do need to hire a professional cameraman, don't I, for these videos. Um, as I was saying, I know that some, some modelers prefer to uh, have their... Um, their circuit boards, the controller boards mounted into the models themselves. Absolutely fine. Look, you know, pers personal choice, personal preference. Um, and I understand possibly the reason for doing that is so that they can keep the base down to a lower profile. Um, personally, I, I've never liked doing that. I've probably mentioned this before. I don't like mounting my circuit boards inside the models because should the circuit board fail, you, you're kind of knackered. You know, the only way to access it is by breaking apart the model undoing all that hard work you would have done just for the sake of the board. That's why I like to mount my circuit boards into the bases so that I've got easy access to them should something go wrong. And so therefore, by upgrading to the Arduino Mega, I'm not limiting myself on space because it's going into the base itself. Also, what that means is going up to the, uh, going up to the Mega and having access to more digital and analog pins. It means I can program, obviously, more into it and have more connected to that board. And so I'm also now thinking about, okay, now it's giving me the availability and options. Maybe I can do it for here. I can do it for the buzzer collectors, the warp nacelles. Now, originally, these were just gonna be LED strips, LEDs incorporated, rigged up to a standard nine volt supply. You turn the power on and they just light up. That's it, that's all they do. But now what I'm thinking about doing because I can now you know, do it with the upgraded board, I can have the effects come on where they, they, they power on, but they fade up, you know, and again, possibly with a sound effect incorporated into it, I can, I can add that in. Maybe I can do the same to the 
the um, the impulse the impulse engine. I could do it with the um, the um, the, def the deflector dish here. Again, I can have lighting effects. I can install the LEDs and have them connected to the Arduino and have them fading up, fading down with sound effects. I can do you know I can do more with this now with the electronic side of it uh, by going through this route. Um, so yeah, that's that's the plan going forward. And so what I think needs to happen then, if I'm going to be doing this, and I've got to be honest, everybody, I probably am going to bloody do it. Why the hell not? You know, why the hell not? Let's 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 go for it. Let's go for it. What that means is, I'm going to stop for the moment with with installing more electronics. This needs to stop now. I can still work on all the other kits. I can carry on working on the um, the bottom section of the uh, the saucer. I can work on all the other the plastic component kits to get them ready. Um, install the aftermarket parts and get them all ready for the uh, the the light blocking and the installation of the lighting. But before I do that, I think what I need to do is I need to get the programming and the Arduino and the circuit board done first. I think that needs to come first. Because I need to figure it out. I need to figure it out. I need to get it all working. I need to get it all programmed. I need to finalize exactly what it is I'm having into this board, what sound effects are doing what. Um, there's more of that I need to download and source more coding to write and also to the point of actually building the board itself. On the microcontroller get it rather than having it sat on the bench in a temporary factor like this um, rigged up to breadboards i think i want to start finalizing the actual board itself get it built and then i can use that to just connect up as i come back to the model kit to then start installing the lighting it's just a quick connector test it's working carry on so i think that's got to come first i think i need to spend a bit of time now figure out right what's the final elements of effects to go in, what's going to do what, get that programmed into the board, get the actual the board rigged up in a more permanent fashion rather than being exper experimental on the, on, on, on the prototype boards here before I do anything else. Because then that means I can just start to plow in, carry on with the rest of the build, get the lighting installed, test things as I go through, job, job done, job done. Um, because what I obviously don't want to do is go plowing on forward, start putting lighting in and then decide, oh, actually, what about this? And then like, oh, Christ, man, I've already, you know, put the lighting in, which means it potentially has got to be stripped out and I've just thought about something else to do. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, I think the plan going forward. So again, apologies for the waffling, everybody on this video, apologies if, uh, for the rambling as well. Um. I just thought I'd like to share what, what I'm going to be doing coming up next. I, and again, apologies for keep repeating myself. I often do that. I really shouldn't do it. I think I need to work on the the programming, the code and the, the, the circuit board. Get, the, get it finalized, get everything in, get everything programmed to all the effects that I want before I then carry on starting to install everything else. While I'm doing that, in the meantime, I can do the, you know, the little bits and pieces onto the plastic kit to get them ready for the lighting. But yeah, get the electronic side finalized first with the Arduino board, I think is the plan going forward. Um, yeah, what other special effects then could I potentially have in this build? I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it could go on forever, couldn't it? Um, something I've mentioned before, I will have an additional little button. Why not? As a little fun thing with this, I'll have a little button where, it, you know, you press a button on the on, on the board itself, or you press a button, and what it will do is cycle through different uh, sound effects, you know, random sound effects, random voice quotes, and all that kind of thing. That's a little bit of a side fun thing uh, to be incorporated as well, aside from just all of the lighting effects and all that kind of thing. And there we go, everybody. That's the plan. I'll stop there. I'll stop waffling on now. Um, thanks for watching, everybody. I just thought I'd, I'd, uh, I wanted to share my thoughts of, of what's where I need to go, what direction I need to take, what's the next stage of progress for this kit before I just start plowing on and doing it. Um, so yeah, I'll go away. I need to write out a shopping list. There's some more electronic components I need to source. 
um, I need to buy um, to get everything ready. Um, more coding that I need to do. Um, I think I'm going to sit down first of all, though, and I'm going to write out in a little notepad exactly what the effects are going to be doing, that I've got a clear picture in my head before I start coding any more into the Arduino. Um, I can just systematically go through and start getting that done. And yeah, and there we go. And in whatever time I've got left after that, make a start on that uh, on the bottom saucer section to install the uh, upgrade parts and get it ready for the lighting as I go through the uh, the coding process as well. But there we are, everybody. I'll wrap up there. Again, apologies for the poor video. Uh, apologies that it cut out halfway through. Um, it's this new camera rig setup. It's a temporary thing and it plays up. But anyway, I'll wrap up there. Thanks for watching, everybody. Um, I hope you're all doing well. Everybody take care. I hope you all have a fantastic week and uh, hopefully I can be back uh, fairly soon uh, with a little bit more of a progress update um, when I get something a little bit more substantial uh, done with this kit. Everybody take care now. Bye-bye.